Making YouTube videos can be a tricky business. Keeping people watching and interested. What gear to use. Good quality lighting. Crisp audio. Editing software. Today we're going to be talking about engagement techniques. Converting views into likes and subscribes. The technical stuff. Cameras and frame rates to get you building your channel. And delivering top quality content on the tube. Here's how. Play tape. And cut. How many seconds was that? First up is your intro. The first 30 seconds are the most important. So keep it snappy and entertaining. Show people what's coming up. Pepper the video with interesting camera angles. Get rid of unnecessary pauses. Ums, mm, <coughs> don't need it. Viewers will click off your video quicker than you can say, bored. A smile goes a long way and it costs nothing. Oh, and finally, a short, snappy channel intro, maybe five or six seconds. It gives potential subscribers a flavor of what your channel's about. Get the idea? And boom, you're in. You've got your viewer. Now it's time to keep them watching. Keep it interesting. Throw some different camera angles in there. Have more than one place to shoot. Or out on location. Throw some B-roll in there. Maybe some slow motion captures. But not too many. Remember, people lose attention quickly. So keep the video moving. Don't stay on one shot for too long. Which brings me swiftly onto cameras. You want to be shooting on the best camera you can get your hands on. Something that shoots in 4K. My main camera is a Sony a7 III. I've got a GoPro Hero 7 Black and I'm shooting this on an iPhone. All of these shoot in 4K. Even if you're downsizing and exporting to 1080 HD, the results are just going to be better. Segwaying into frame rates and shutter speeds. I shoot almost exclusively in 24 frames a second because it has that filmic quality, just like in the movies. If you want something a bit more prime time TV, then 30 frames a second is the way to go. Now I don't shoot 60 frames a second unless I'm slowing it down to 24, and 120 frames a second gets you that silky smooth slow-mo effect. Talking of silky smooth, try and get smooth footage either with tripods, gimbals, or built-in stabilizers. Nobody enjoys shaky footage, it's just irritating. Let me try that again. Nobody likes shaky footage, it's just irritating. Viewers will click off that video for reasons just like those. So a quick note on shutter speed. You'll want to set your shutter at twice the speed of your frame rate. For example, if you're shooting at 24 frames a second, then set your shutter at the closest available speed, which would be 50th of a second. If you're shooting 30 frames a second, then you'll want to be at 60th of a second, and 60 frames a second, 120. You get the picture. But all of these fancy cameras will be useless without good lighting. Camera image quality goes down with bad lighting, and it's just not good to watch. Use a well-lit room with nice, diffused daylight. Or invest in some good LED studio lights and softboxes. Or even a kicker light. Fancy. If you're out filming in low lighting conditions, another idea is to use an LED lighting panel on top of the camera. I'll put a link to all the gear I use in the description below. Next up is audio, and this is a really important one. A simple rule of thumb with any microphone is the closer you get it to your mouth, the better the audio will be. Bad audio and your audience will take a hike. I use a couple of vlogging techniques for good audio. A Rode VideoMic Pro directly into the camera. Second microphone if I'm further away from the camera. Something like a lavalier microphone. Plugged into an audio recorder like the Zoom H1N. I'll talk about syncing audio in a short while. But recording two audio tracks is good practice because you always have a backup should anything go wrong. Music can really bring your videos to the next level if you're wise with your choices. And be careful with your levels as well. You don't want to bombard your audience with a cacophony of noise. You don't want to bombard your audience with a cacophony of noise. They want to hear what you're saying. During some B-roll, crank up the beats. But just be careful with copyright. You can't use just any music on your videos, say from the top 10 charts, for instance. YouTube has an audio library of free music to use on your videos. Or if you want a bit more variety, then use a subscription-based platform like Epidemic Sound. 10 pounds a month gets you access to 32,000 tracks and 60,000 sound effects. So how are you guys doing? You still with me? Still keeping things moving along, keeping the personality bubbling away, getting rid of all those pauses? Good. Next up is editing software. Some of the options available to you are Adobe Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, and iMovie. I use DaVinci Resolve, which is incredibly intuitive. And if you're just starting out in editing, there's a free version which has everything you need. You know, I said earlier about getting rid of all those unnecessary pauses and all that air in your script. Well, here's how we do it using DaVinci Resolve. That clip was actually recorded like this. You know, I said earlier about 
getting rid of all those <coughs> unnecessary pauses and get that razor tool and start chopping out all that stuff we don't need. Now let's take a look at the clip. You know, I said earlier about getting rid of all those unnecessary pauses and all that air in your script. Well, here's how we do it using DaVinci Resolve. Loads more energy done in half the time equals more viewers sticking around to watch more of that video. It might help to write and rehearse what you're going to say to avoid poor performance. And while you're in the mirror, check your appearance. Make sure you're looking your best. Viewers are just looking for reasons not to keep watching. Audio syncing done in DaVinci Resolve is really simple. So we have our video clip with embedded audio from the camera mic. Any microphone is the closer you get it to your mouth, the better the audio will be. But we want to use the better quality audio from the mic on the boom arm. Then simply locate the corresponding audio file on your computer, drag it into the media pool and then select both the video and the audio files. Right click and choose audio sync based on waveform. It analyzes the file and lines up the tracks perfectly and that's it. Any microphone is the closer you get it to your mouth, the better the audio will be. So once you have your video timeline all edited and you're happy, it's time for exporting ready for YouTube. Head over to the deliver section and there is a dedicated YouTube tab. You can choose either 4K or full HD exporting. I use the default settings for video and audio codecs and format to MP4. 4K files will be much bigger than HD, so bear that in mind when you're uploading to YouTube and the processing times. So which one should you use? Well, I export in 4K and HD, depending on the length of the video. If it's a long video, say 15 to 20 minutes, I export at HD. If it's a shorter video, say 5 to 10 minutes, then I'll use 4K. Both are respectable resolutions on YouTube. And speaking of video length, between 10 and 15 minutes is a sweet spot for gaining an audience and keeping it. Think of all those 15 minute tea breaks people take during work. So you've produced your 10 to 15 minute video. Now you need a strong finale with an encore to boot. Thank your viewers for watching up to this point. Tell them something about future projects or upcoming videos they might be interested in, but keep it short and sweet. And keep the personality going, keep smiling, they're infectious. Then comes the all important call to action. Ask them if they liked the video, get them to like the video, maybe even subscribe to the channel. Because if they did like this video and you made a good impression, chances are they'll probably like your others too. But with a call to action, it's just a little suggestive nudge. Listen, thanks for watching guys. You've been fantastic company as always. I hope this video was helpful. I mean, it was helpful to me. It's a good reminder of, you know, what's worked for me in the past. Give us a thumbs up and you'd be a superstar if you hit that subscribe button. It keeps me motivated to keep making these videos. And if nothing else, it gets me out of doing the shopping. Later dudes.